The color of the majority of a white adipocyte is going to be taken up by that lipid vacuole in the center of the cell, but surrounding the nucleus, which is pushed to the periphery of the cell, is a slightly enlarged um, place of cytoplasm. That area is going to be where we secrete various adipokines from. Adipokines are a number of different um, peptides that are secreted from adipocytes and have numerous different functions all over the body. Okay, so they're secreted from adipocytes and they communicate with a bunch of different tissues and they also have an effect on adipose tissue itself. So it's also an autocrine function as well. There are more than 600 proteins that are secreted by adipose tissue. And this is really interesting because it's actually fairly recently that we realize that adipose tissue is a dynamic tissue and is able to secrete uh, a number of different factors that can communicate with the rest of the body, not just uh, informing it of what's going on with the adiposity of our adipocytes, but also having roles in things like uh, immune function as well. Okay, so uh, adipokines are something that really links adipose tissue and energy status with the immune system, something that's going to become really important when we start talking about obesity and low-grade inflammation. So normally, when kind of things are in balance, they are they are within balance, uh, adipose tissue is going to secrete adipokines within a physiologically beneficial pattern. Okay, there's going to be normal adipokine secretion, and overall, at a lower levels of adiposity, people's uh, adipokine secretion patterns tend to be associated with lower amounts of inflammation and overall health-promoting effects on the body. However, when our fat cells get very large and when adip uh, adipose tissue is enlarged as well, then we tend to have more uh, dysregulated adipokine secretion. And this dysregulated adipokine secretion, and I say dysregulated because it kind of depends on which factor we're talking about. Some uh, secretion patterns go up, some secretion patterns go down, but overall that change, that dysregulation in adipokine secretion contributes to some of the um, metabolic impairments, the uh, comorbidities that we see in obesity, okay? So fat in itself is not a problem. Having adipose tissue in itself is not a problem. And of course, we need adipose tissue because we need to store vitamins, we need to store energy for later use. But the issue is that beyond a certain level of adiposity, and we don't know what it is, that level is, and it probably is different for each person, beyond a certain level of adiposity, it's like when good cells go bad, basically. Okay, so beyond that level of adiposity, adipokine secretion changes to a state that promotes more inflammation and just increases risk of, like I mentioned, all the comorbidities we see with obesity. Okay, so there are a number of different adipokines. We're obviously not going to cover them all, but in this unit, we're going to kind of focus on the big, the big guys. Okay, in particular, we're going to spend quite a bit of time on leptin and adiponectin as well, and we are also going to cover uh, interleukin six and tumor necrosis factor alpha, which are two. These last two are more um, inflammation promoting uh, adipokines. As we learn about these adipokines, what's really important is to not forget about complexity. It's easy to be like, oh, leptin secretion, when it changes, it has these effects, and so leptin is a solution for everything, okay? <laughs> so it's all complex. There's so many different factors that are interacting with each other within the body and with different tissues, and it's not, you know, we can't just reduce obesity to one adipokine or one dysfunction. There is a complex interaction between adipokines, between adipose tissue and other tissues and other tissues and adipose tissue. So while we're, we are kind of reducing <laughs> obesity a little bit by looking at specific adipokines, please keep in your mind that no single adipokine is responsible for the pathology we see with obesity and no single adipokine is the solution to obesity as well. Okay, so keep that in mind as we move on and learn about some specific adipokines.